Hey there, View Askew fans, this is Wesatron. Today we're going to be taking a look at Big Blast's Blunt Man and Chronic Blunt Man action figure. Um, Big Blast was, um, I don't know if they're still around, honestly, um, but they used to do sort of uh, eight inch scale figures of kind of comic book characters. Um, I think they did Madman, they did uh, Kevin Matchstick, um, I think they might have even done a Hellboy. Uh, yeah, I think they did the first Hellboy figure, but th they were sort of very limited to um, like kind of indie source material. And uh, but they made some kind of cool action figures over the years. So um, this is based off of the, uh, I guess they're all fictional, but the fictional within the time or within the chronology. No, that doesn't even work. Fictional within the mythos, sure, uh, <laughs> of uh, the View Askew universe wherein um, Blunt Man and Chronic are superheroes who sort of debuted in uh, Chasing Amy um, and then kind of had a bigger part in the, whatchamacallit, uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And then they had their own comic book and stuff. So, um, But they did release action figures of these, and these are, I believe, an 8-inch scale. I'll get a better look once we get them out of package. Um, the packages on these are pretty beat up because I did get these used online, but I only paid like, I think it was like 10 or 15 bucks, maybe 18 bucks for the pair. So, pretty good deal for me. Um, simple uh, window packaging here. You can see Blunt Man. Uh, great uh, art up at the top by, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Michael Oming or Wemming. I'm not sure really how you say his name, but uh, on the back, it actually says somewhere on here. Um, yeah, blister card art, Michael Avon Oming. And if you don't know who that is, that's the guy who did Powers with... Uh, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, so that's pretty cool. That's the uh, dryer. Sorry about that. <laughs> Based on designs by Michael Avon Oming, but then down here it also says Blunt Man and Chronic, originally designed by Mike Allred from uh, Madman fame. So, pretty interesting how all of it ties together, I guess, with their other properties and stuff, but there is a bit of a bio here. If you want to take a look at this, I'll just scroll down slowly. Because it is kind of long. Hopefully you can read all that. It's in kind of a weird text. Um, but it's just, you know, silly stuff about Blunt Man. And, of course, there's Kevin Smith in his Blunt Man costume. So, pretty cool. Uh, sorry to have spent so much time talking about the packaging, but it is a little different. Um, so, yeah, let's get this guy out and see what he's about. So here's Blunt Man out of packaging. And uh, I've got him in just a... Uh, Blunt Saber wielding pose here. Um, I kind of thought that they should probably call this the Bong Saber instead because of what it is. Um, but that's neither here nor there. That's That has nothing to do with the figure. It just uh, seems like Bong Saber would fit better, even though Blunt Saber probably sounds better. Now on the box, these comes with three of these. They're called uh, just Throwing Stars. Uh, see, I would think that these would be a great opportunity to call these Blunterangs. Doesn't that sound cool? I like that better. But yeah, he comes with three of these. So, and those do fit into his hands. Uh, the leafy part that you would like to grab, um, it it doesn't fit into his left hand at least. I haven't tried his right hand to see if it'll snap in there. Yeah, his thumb's too far apart, so that won't grab, but the, uh, the leafs will grab even if the stem doesn't. That's the word I was looking for a second ago, stem. Um, and he comes packaged also with two fists. So... Remember that this figure came out in 2002, so like things like interchangeable fists and lots of accessories and stuff, um, that's that's pretty, I wouldn't say ahead of its time, but it's a good value for the time, um, and definitely a good value for now. And then also he comes with his goggles, which are removable, so if I can get up underneath here, pop those off, okay, actually I'll probably do it from the back, it'd be easier, there we go, pop them right off. Cool. So we've got synthetic hair here. Nice. Little uh, rat's nest back here. Um, pretty cool uh, likeness there. Um, definitely looks like the comic, if not Kevin Smith himself. I, I could definitely see a little Kevin Smith in there. Um, particularly, I think, in the eyes. But uh, yeah, very, very cool. I really, really dig it. And I dig the beard. It does very much look like uh, Michael Levin Oming's work. I really, really like it. You can see under the jacket, the jacket is real cloth. Underneath the jacket, we've got the uh, Blunt Man symbol. Very cool. Utility belt down here with a uh, <laughs> another uh, marijuana leaf there. 
Um, in the back, we've just got a big buckle and then kind of shorts with leggings on underneath them and then buckles on the boots, a shiny uh, black uh, lacquer for the boots, which is cool because it makes them stand out and look leather. I dig that. Also, same thing on the midsection there. Not a ton of like big paint detail, um, but very, very cool. Like, I mean, it's based on a comic book, so it doesn't need a lot of paint detail. Um, now, the jacket does appear to be um, a material, like it's a flexible material like cloth, but then maybe like it's painted over or something. You can see it's starting to crack already, and it was kind of like that when I already pulled it out. So I wonder if this is going to hold up very well over time. That, that kind of worries me a little bit, um, because it is kind of iconic for him to wear his jacket like... I, I can't really think of a time, at least, I, I haven't read the comics, but at least in the uh, movies, where, uh, or the art from the movies, where he didn't wear his jacket, but very cool. But then again, he kind of looks awesome without it. I, I really like, that looks kind of cool on its own, I dig that. Uh, if you didn't know and you can't tell, you know, um, Kevin Smith is a huge Batman fan, hence the uh, horns on top and the design of the helmet in uh, Mallrats, kind of uh, odes to uh, his favorite character. But, uh, yeah, very cool. I really, really, really dig the way this guy looks. Articulation-wise, oh, yeah, and there's nothing on the back when his jacket's off. Articulation-wise, we've got a ball-jointed neck. So he gets a little bit up and down, a uh, little tilt action there, and then side to side. Now, it is kind of mounted on an angle, so when he looks side to side, it might, you know, twist the head a little bit as opposed to turning it. But uh, that's not a big deal because you can always kind of straighten it if you need to. Swivel hinges in the shoulders, which go all the way around and then out without restriction. Uh, we've got swivels in the biceps, and this is kind of interesting. Like this swivel is kind of straight, where it just goes completely around. This one's kind of cut at a bit of an angle, so when you start turning it, it like see how it twists the arm out a little bit. That's kind of weird. Um, hinges on the elbows, so about 90 degrees, not perfect, but close. Swivels in the wrists, and those can be popped off easily uh, to swap them out with the other wrists. Pop right on, see? Very cool. We've got a swivel waist. We've got ball jointed hips, but the ball is set at an angle like this, so that uh, it's kind of like almost V hips. You can see how those move out like that. Um, but they do have a nice range out to the side at least. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of V-hips when they don't have a thigh cut. He unfortunately does not have a thigh cut, so when you turn him like this and you, you know, hinge his leg, his feet aren't going to sit flat. So you have to work with the articulation a little bit to get it into a pose you want. Otherwise, he's just going to be standing there, which is totally fine if that's if you like vanilla poses. But if you want to get him into some cool action poses, it might not work for you. Uh, but the hinges do get, uh, I don't know, less than 90 degrees. Not, not perfect by any means there. Both sides. We've got swivels in the boot tops. And then hinges, they don't go very far forward, unfortunately, but they go way back. So lots and lots of rear movement on the hinges and the ankles. So pretty cool overall. I dig it. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot to say about this guy. I mean, he looks great. Um, at least I think he does. I, I love the art style of uh, Michael Oming. I, I hope I'm saying his name right. I don't know. Um, I, uh, I think it looks great. Um, Big Blast made some pretty cool for as few as they made over the years. Like I said, I don't think they're still making toys, um, but like the Kevin Matchstick figure is a really, really cool toy from back in the day. Um, I didn't have the Hellboy, but he always looked really cool. Same with the uh, Mike Allred uh, Madman looked very cool. So uh, I dig this company. I dig what they did. Um, some pretty nice articulation given the time. At 2002, you know, there people are still trying to find out what an action figure meant to adult collectors. So I think they did a pretty good job over a Big Blast. Um, lots of accessories, you know, lots of stuff it comes with. The, the code is cool, even if it's uh, going to crack over time. I really dig this figure. Um, and like I said, I think I didn't pay more than 18 bucks for it, which makes it like $9 for him and then $9 for Chronic. Um, so I am very excited to have him in the collection. I think he looks great. Definitely pick up if you can get it for probably $15 or less. Uh, if you can get the pair for around $30, then that's a pretty good deal. Um, once you get up to like $35, $37, you, you might not like it as much. But I really, really like this figure. I think it's very cool. It's very unique. You know, the, there's not a whole lot of, uh, like, figure-wise merchandise for uh, the uh, old View Askew films, which are the Kevin Smith films from back in the day. Um, 
aside from the in-action figures, and I don't like in-action figures, I like action figures, so this is pretty cool, I dig it. Um, yeah, if you get the opportunity to pick it up, I would at least, I think it's cool, um, very, very unique to be on the shelf. I am a little concerned about this jacket over time, but uh, yeah, that might crack some more over time, it's like, yeah, cracking as we speak, so we'll see. Um, if it does break down really badly, I might do a follow-up video, but we can get to that later, don't worry about it. So, uh, oh, I forgot to show you his other hand here. It does have the thumb attached. So, you could probably snip that if you wanted to, or... Actually, that that might just be... Yeah, I'm sorry, that was just paint. That is detached. It was just connected by paint. So, he does have an open other hand. Cool. So, yeah. Blunt Man from Blunt Man and Chronic. Very cool action figure. De definitely recommend it if you can find it for anywhere from 10 to $15. Um, he is available. Just keep an eye out. Check your uh, eBay save searches, stuff like that. You'll find one. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'd be glad to answer it. I may also do Chronic. I thought about doing them both in the same video, but um, the packages were really big, and I wasn't sure if I could cover everything in both. So, yeah. But yeah, any questions or comments, throw them in the box below. Glad to answer them for you. Uh, anything at all you want to know, I'd be glad to help. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye. And just real quick here, I just wanted to show you guys the scale, because I did mention that it was about 8-inch scale, but I didn't really show it off. Um, over here we've got 7-inch NECA Clubber Lang, 6-inch Hasbro uh, Marvel Legends Iron Man, and so you can see how he's a little bit taller than Clubber. Let me see if I can make that. There you go little bit taller than Clubber, um, so while he may look 7 inches because he's supposed to be a short guy, um, he probably does fall more into the 8 inch range. Um, so yeah, just wanted to show that off real quick just in case anybody was curious how he would fit in with your other collection. He'd probably still look okay with a NECA collection, but he'd probably fit in better with like the Joyride Master Chief or if you have the other um, uh, big blast figures, then uh, he'd definitely fit in with those. So just wanted to show that off. So again, thanks guys. Talk to you later.